you may you may not believe this, but this is the third time I'm doing this lecture, <laughs> and for some reason, I've, I've been messing up the recording of it. But however, I, I'm, we're going to focus in this third part of our lecture on I Shot the Sheriff uh, by Bob Marley, looking clear, carefully at the lyric of I Shot the Sheriff, um, taking it from the, from, the, from the top of the song. Now, I wanted to say some very basic things about I Shot the Sheriff, because I Shot the Sheriff was made hugely popular by um, Eric Clapton, who did a cover version of it. That's part of its reason for popularity. Um, it in it itself as part of burning. Burning would go on to become one of the, the one of the the, the the great the top five hundred selling albums, uh, ranked albums by Rolling Stones in the world. Um, over this is over over, you know over the years, um, and and of course it was a very successful. It was certified gold. It it did some success and so on. So the so Marley's version was not um, anything to sniff at. Clapton's version was put on a new album. Clapton had left his old band, I forget the name of the band, and had formed his own sort of solo uh, career. And um, in this solo career, uh, Eric Clapton does cover songs uh, that include cover songs of uh, songs by Bob Dylan. Um, and of course, this, this work, a lot of it's spiritual. So there's a new sort of emergence of Eric Clapton as a kind of spiritual, somebody engaged in spiritual ideas, but rooted in the blue sensibility and so on. What may have appealed to Eric Clapton was the familiarity of I Shot the Sheriff, because I Shot the Sheriff is classically rooted in um, in the idiom of the Western. And so what Marley does is he appropriates the Western. The, that's the American Hollywood Western, and uses the, the Hollywood Western to tell this important story, this story of freedom, liberation, resistance. Um, uh, and and one one must read this song in the context of Marley's other work that to re realize that it is a song of resistance and a, a song of um, a, a song of rebellion against oppressive systems, and and this made sense for Marley. Now remember that the Western was ubiquitous in Amer in, Jam in in Jamaican society, um, and the rest of the world. The Western would define a way in which the world saw native people, the way in which the world the world saw the West, the, the distorted way in which the West the, the world saw what cow who cowboys were, um, in 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 a, in a world in which cowboys were in fact something like 40, 30 to forty percent African American. There was no African American in Hollywood westerns. Um, you know, in the, in, the, in the most dominant period of the Hollywood Western. So the Hollywood Western presented the essential Marlboro Man. It's the John Wayne. It's the figure who is this dignified figure who is fighting against all odds. It carries a mythology. Marley takes that mythology and turns it on its head. Turns it on its head because what he does is that he constructs an act, a, a character who speaks in this song and the character is the outlaw, the outlaw who confronts the law, the sheriff and the deputies, and, and because the law is wrong-headed, the, ro the law is unjust in society, the law is doing the wrong thing. In a sense, this idea that the law is destroying people is, is fundamental to this notion of Babylon, which we'll talk about thematically and what it all means in Jamaican society. So, I Shot the Sheriff tells this story. It's also interesting in, in terms of Bob Marley's lyric songs because it's unique. Um, it's in four parts, I think four verses, right? Um, and these four verses tell a story. It's a narrative song. Um, and there, there are not many of those sort of strictly narrative songs that go through a plot, right? Um, you know, it, it, it describes the incident and it describes the moment where the violence takes place. It does all of it. And then it, it arrives at what, what you, you want in a ballad, um, the classic ballad, which is the, the message, the story that it's telling um, and where, where it's going to. Yet, if you listen to it in the context of 1970s, um, what has happened in the 60s before, what is going on before, you know, ahead in the, in the 70s, you can begin to see what a radical song and an expression of radical resistance it is. It has an energy to it. So let's, let's just look carefully at the lyrics. All around the, my hometown, they're trying to track me down. They want to bring me in guilty for the killing of the deputy. But I say, one, 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 one. I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy, right? I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. So, so of course, that's the beginning. 
the context of the world that he faces, where they're trying to they're trying to track him down and they're trying to make him guilty. Throughout this song, the, the chorus is 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 interspersed with these sort of expressions, these exclamations. Um, read it in the news. If I'm guilty, I will play. Um, I didn't shoot no deputy. There's that refrain, but the lyric, the, the chorus itself just simply says, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Let's understand something about the term sheriff and deputy. Those are not terms that we use in Jamaica to refer to the police force or anything like that. In fact, sheriffs were not, are not a function of Jamaican uh, jurispr jurisprudence or the Jamaican Law Enforcement Society and so on. That is an American idea, um, originated in Britain, but the sheriff was a very different form, uh, figure in the, in the old uh, uh, British system. And in Jamaica, it doesn't translate into it. Um, you know, so, so, so what we see as the sheriff in America Mali is engaging the, the Western idea of the sheriff in, in, in it. And of course, we know who the sheriff is. The sheriff is the top guy. The sheriff then deputizes people to follow him. And the sheriff-deputy relationship is a very familiar one if we think about the way in which American society, um, after the Civil War, created these, these, these um, uh, pseudo-military uh, enforcement entities that were almost vigilante in their structure. The Klan was one of those examples, right? There's an individual who has the 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 the, 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 the support, not only the support, but the endorsement of the government, right? Who is the sheriff, and then the sheriff or the leader who is has the endorsement of the government, then deputizes people to form posses, and the posses go after the bad guys, so to speak. Well, here's the interesting thing about the period after the Civil War was all these penitentiaries that are that are ubiquitous in American society now begin to be to blow up and to find their great formation in the 19th century, the late 19th century. These are parchment farms, Angola, all of these major places throughout throughout the South. Why were they there? They were there to become repositories for. African Americans, men who have been arrested for trumpet of charges, loitering, vagrancy, anything trivial, given given several years of hard labor, and then those penitentiaries would then hire out these hard labor workers to the farmers, essentially recreating the slave system, um, and and doing it under the, the 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 law in the support of the law. So. So escape from that slave system, that new slave system, whether it was sharecropping or whether it was the military, the new military system, um, the new the new law enforcement system, was something that Mali was explicitly challenging in 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 this song. Because of course, when we get to the verse where he says, "Freedom came my way one day," the idea that freedom is is elemental to what is happening to this oppressive system that is upon them tells you something about how Mali was connecting all the dots to make a statement about oppressive systems and the need for especially people, black men, African descent, to, to resist it. So we go on to the second verse. Here he sets up the situation. Here's the story. Sheriff John Brown always hated me for what I don't know. Every time I plant a seed, he says, kill it before it grows. Kill them before they grow. It's a very powerful moment. He says, the Sarah John Brown, for he hates me for something I don't know. I don't know what he hates me for. But every time I plant a seed, symbolically, literally planting the seed as a farmer, but of course symbolically planting the seed of possibility, planting the seed of growth, planting the seed of my own children, the reproduction of myself, the reproduction of my abilities and my talents. And every time I plant a seed, Sheriff John Brown says, kill it before it grows. And then the collective, kill them before they grow, then reminds us that he's talking about the broader resistance to oppressive systems by a whole culture. The next verse then, um, Bob Marley then starts to get into the action. So having had this situation, he says, freedom came my way one day, and I started out of town. All of a sudden, I saw Sheriff John Brown. He was aiming to shoot me down. So what? I shot. I shot him down. Right? So action. Freedom came my way. I'm getting out of town, trying to avoid the situation. I don't call trouble on myself. But Sheriff John Brown confronts, right? And then he, he shoots. He aims to shoot him down. And, of course, the Mali figure shoots Sheriff John Brown. So he says, read it in the news. Bye, bye, bye. I shot the sheriff. 
Lord, I didn't shoot the deputy. Right? Um, and, and of course, there is a sense in which Marley then has to explain what happened and why it happened. And he does that in the last verse. He says, reflexes got the better of me. This is the explanation, that I acted in defense. He says, I shot him in defense as a reflex that the rest for freedom, the push for freedom and liberation, the push against oppressive systems is natural. So reflexes got a better of me and what is to be must be. Every day the bucket go out well, one day the bottom are going, are going to drop out. What is that? It's a proverb. It translates every day you take the bucket to the well, one day the bottom will fall out. Meaning every day you carry an act, an act of oppression, an act that is loading the different, the negative things you do, the, the evil that you keep doing. If you keep doing this evil, at some point it's going to break. And of course the breaking point is for the, the, the cowboy, the Bob Marley figure who says, eventually your oppression of me is going to lead to rebellious action. It's going to lead to war. We think of Bob Marley's song, War. Until the philosophy that holds one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned, everywhere is war. Until there will be war. Until there would be war. We'll go on to another song on this album where Bob Marley says, if you do this, this will happen. And the this that will happen is the consequence of doing this oppressive thing. And that's the construction of the song. So what's this business of? I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. It's funny. It's actually a bit of a joke, but, but a serious joke. What Mali is saying is, they are accusing me of shooting the second guy, the lower guy, but I shot the top guy. In other words, at the end of the day, what I've done is destroyed the head of this oppressive system. So I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy is ironic, and it's also a declaration of the, the, the commitment to this action, to this, this, this action of resistance. It's a very powerful articulation. Mali's sort of use of that proverb at the end also reminds us of the, of the statement that Malcolm X makes on the news of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. A controversial statement, a statement that became hugely controversial, and he was upbraided for it. And what, what Malcolm X actually said was, in response, he said, well, the chickens have come home to roost. So people were trying to say, well, what is that supposed to mean? Now, it's a similar kind of declaration, because what Malcolm X was referring to was the entire enterprise of violence, violence that the United States government has endorsed and has followed the lynchings, the support of uh, redlining, the support of, 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 of state-sanctioned brutality of African Americans, the encouragement of violent actions and so on as a way to solve problems around the world led by America. And he says, well, at some point, every day, the buck, the, 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 every day you carry the bucket to the well, one day the bottom are going to drop out. Chickens have come home to roost. I Shot the Sheriff is a tough song. It's a song also that says, I am being victimized by our world, but I'm proudly saying I've had to act against it. So that's I Shot the Sheriff. 